the acquisition of digital skills for you. We've seen the best global practices, government and the private sector partnering. And on our, at the ministry, we have five strategic implementation partners. And if not for the COVID-19 pandemic, that kind of short-circuited our plans, we'll have at this time been talking about 250,000 youth already with digital skills and certification. We have a partnership with IBM that has delivered over 17,000 people online, youth. And we have testimonials to that, who have gone to get their training online and they have IBM certifications. Just before COVID-19 took place, pandemic, the Africa Development Bank had concluded to set up 17 centers of excellence across the country in partnership with the Ministry of Youth and Sport for what they call coding for employment. And all our youth will have been at least 200 youth by each of these center. But COVID-19 happened, that also stopped. Junior Achievement has about 64 centers across the country where to equip them and then use them to train youth for digital training. But we're back again, the world is opening up and we have plans. I can tell you from November, we're going to be training between 100 and 200 youth in each geopolitical zone. We've identified the states on coding for employment. And our model now is training into enterprise. In the past, we just simply trained our youth and then turned them back again into the job market without giving them what they need to be self-starters and world creators. The model now is an end-to-end -end model. We train that will lead you into enterprise or entrepreneurship. We provide starter parks, we provide uh, finance for you to, to start off. And that is the whole essence of the Nigerian Youth Investment Fund, to invest in the innovative ideas and skills of our youth. So we're joining, we're matching training with entrepreneurship. And that way we're able to lift most of our youth out of, uh, out of unemployment and poverty as the case may be. Jobs, government jobs are disappearing so fast. And we realize that our youth, they're innovative, they have great ideas, they can build enterprises, and we need to support them with the needed finance. Because without the needed credit and finance, that won't happen. Now, Ambassador David Ibrahim, you spoke at length. I may not be able to mention everybody's name, but I'll just take the issues and respond. And I think that uh, the idea of quick response through government is very important. But also, not all issues can be quickly responded to. Let me take the gamut of, of demands that have been provided, five of them, as we have. Some of them will need administrative response, and there's a timeline for that. Some of them will need executive uh, orders, response. There's a timeline for that. There must be the drafting, the legal work. But some of them will need legislation. And that means they have to go through the executive, then taken to the uh, National Assembly, but the Senate and the House of Reps. And that will take time too, because these are processes you cannot really, you can accelerate them, but you must give them time so that whatever they put together will stand the test of time when it comes to legality and within the rule of law. But then, my understanding is that some of these demands, they are the demands that we can meet now, and they have been met. They are the demands that can be medium term. They are demands that are long term. And I think government has a clear understanding. Just working with uh, some of the youth, we, we've been able to demarcate that, the ones for now, the ones for uh, short term, and the one for medium term. Police reforms, for instance, will take time. And that process has begun. We just have to be vigilant to make sure that that process goes through. The disbandment is now, and that has happened. Prosecution and bringing to justice the guilty is a process that has to be in a continent. And that has all, all already started. Um, I listened to... Uh, some of the takeaways I have is that we, we need probes to occur, we need prosecution, and we need justice. 36 officers have been retired, about seven have undergone ordinary trial. Ogun State Governor has listed about 11 that will be tried for violations during the protest. Lagos State Governor this morning has also listed over a dozen, and we want to expect that with vigilance, we get every state 
to do the needful so that we can have quite a number of these people come forward to account uh, for what they've done. That is part of the demands of the Nigerian youth. That is what the Nigerian government and the President Mahmoud Bouhari has committed to. First, to ban SARS, which he has done. Two, to make sure that you have a thorough investigation of the killings that have occurred in the past and during the NSAS protests to bring the book to those that are, that are guilty. And that process is ongoing, but it's going to need vigilance on our part. Um, let me also speak to what Bafa said. Uh, Bafa, I had you loud and clear, and you, you come from a background of uh, uh, just working with people, uh, both young and old, and uh, your development perspectives are well known. And I think uh, the loss of lives uh, very regrettable, very regrettable. Like I said, we're going to make sure we get justice for every youth that lost his life. I think that is important. And the necessary levels of government, human rights, the Human Rights uh, Commission is working. On our part, we're also collating whatever we can get on our, on our website. We'll put it together and pass it to government. And uh, like the Minister of Women Affairs said, there can be no Nigeria without the youth. The youth of our country, our resource, like I've said, are not a problem. And the voice of every Nigerian youth is important. So let me say this. I may have to say that at the end. On our part as a ministry, we've begun an awareness campaign. An awareness campaign that is rooted around the issues and the aspirations of Nigerians. So that constantly, both the youth and those in power are reminded that this is the kind of Nigeria our youths deserve and want. These are the issues that need to be made. Constantly is held up before us as a mirror. That's one. Two, we're looking at the Nigerian Youth Assembly so that we can have this engagement on a continuous basis. The virtual meeting we're having will take place every Friday. Government and the ministry is committed to that. The format might change, but this forum of conversation and feedback will occur every Friday. And some of this week, week when we have this, we might be able to even bring back some really important progress that we have made because we are in touch with all levels of government, police, IG, and several others to give us updates so that we can pass this along. But we think that we want to work to have the Nigerian Youth Assembly and we'll have to discuss it with, with the youth to say, let's have five representatives from each state and let them meet with the government at a, another level through the ministry. Let's have this conversation. Let's also tell them what government is doing and they can become youth ambassadors, five of them each, in each of their states. That is a proposal we're looking at that we want to finalize. Uh, we also think it's important that uh, we plan to establish a help desk. We already have a deal office here. The help desk will be important because the youth can now call in directly or email or do WhatsApp to find out information. What opportunities exist? How do I apply? In which ministry? In which department? We have 25 different youth focus programs. Like I said, they're in several ministries and agents and agencies. Most people don't have this information. I must agree. Of the 25, only two of them are under our ministry. But then we're in the process of making sure that the implementation process, the information, the database that is needed is also domiciled with us so that through the help desk that we have on multiple platforms, social media platforms, where our youth, our youth play, the help desk can help provide information. For those that can't come in directly, you could call. What is the website? I have a problem. Uh, applying for this and we can get necessary guidance about 10 months ago we did open and launch uh, NOIA of course during COVID-19 we stopped work on it that is a website it is the Nigerian online youth assembly realizing that most of our youth are normally online we said the best place to meet our youth is online so we set up the Nigerian youth online youth assembly NOIA and NOIA is simply an aggregator website. It aggregates all opportunities, both within government, private sector, and the international community for our youth. Is it fellowship? Is it scholarship? Is it training? Is it awards? Is it competition? That, that, that trove of information exists for them. 
unless our youth apply themselves to this website and these opportunities, they cannot benefit from it. But I think that it's true that communication has to uh, be more effectual. We need to also develop uh, multiple levels of information uh, dissemination. So if you don't get it from your social media platform, you can get it from our website. If you don't get it, you can call our help desk. But then in a deliberate way, even as a youth, you must in a deliberate way search for this key information so that it can empower you. I think I'll leave it at that so that others can contribute. And then when we're, when we're about to wrap up, I can speak uh, in more def definitive terms. Thank you very much. Very much. You know, um, there's, a, there's a global, the, the global definition of a youth is universal. There are a bit uh, variations, a bit of variations at the continental level, but it is a great.